Broadcast from the center of the universe. Featuring optometrist turned entrepreneur Dr. Robert Zellner and U.S. SBA Entrepreneur of the Year, Clay Clark. Because eventually it all comes down to, you're fired, get out of here. You know, it's okay for you to encourage them to move on if, if you don't like them, because they probably don't like you either. Yeah. They probably have a, there's probably a job out there they will like. Welcome in to the show here. It's the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. Josh Merrill here with America's number one business coach, Clay Clark. Boom. We've also got Dr. Z with us today. Dr. Z. In the house. And special guest, the uh, school teacher turned millionaire, Mr. Clay Stairs. Hello. Boom. Clay, what are we talking about today on Thrive Time? What we're talking about is we're talking about that weird phase that we all get into when we have a business. I, I call it the adult with the gray hair. But what happens is you're starting to sell some stuff 20 years ago. You're making some good money now, and your goals used to be, I want to change the industry. I want to change lives. I want to change the way people make cookies. I want to change the way people do plumbing. And now you have some gray hair, motivation's waning a little bit, and you're going, my new goal is just to break even. If I could just break even this year, <laughs> if I could lose a little less than I lost last year, and you start to become more quote unquote realistic. And so we're going to teach you how to avoid that trap. Well, the important thing too is, Clay, is remember that we've broken down the, the a business growth into eight stages. Yep. And so in the last show, we, we covered the first four, and now we get to do the other four on this one. So this one is, uh, you say a, adult with gray hair. I like to use the word mature adult. Oh, that's nice. Oh, beautiful. That's nice. It's beautiful. mature. Beautiful. beautiful. Maturing. Yeah, so it was the eight business stages to turn uh, your business dreams into reality. Uh, real quick, I'm going to go over the, the first four stages. Yeah, sure. Go. Uh, stage one, giving birth. Sounds great. Stage two, <laughs> raising a baby business. Uh, stage three, the bipolar teenager. I like that one quite a bit. That's an interesting mm -hmm. phase. Uh, and stage four, uh, the adult. And now we're at stage five. And I want to tell you this. If you want to listen back to those stages, hear us talk about them, just go to thrivetimeshow.com. You can hear back. You'll love it. It's awesome. Now, here's the deal. If we're going to have some gray hair, we might as well look like George Clooney and not Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> now, like now Clay and I were talking I off I think my air. wife would prefer that, actually. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, Clay and I were talking off air, and Clay was, was pointing out that Jabba the Hutt might not be middle-aged. He, in fact, might be more mature than we thought he was. Sure. But really the point is, if you're going to be that old, you're gonna, next year you're going to be a year older anyway. Yeah. So you might as well be a year older with some financial freedom and some time freedom to go with that. And so I want to read a really st a disturbing statistic that I'd Ooh, read in the I Atlantic. Like disturbing, disturbing statistic. So here it is. It says 47% of people who were surveyed by the Federal Reserve, that's 47% of the people, they said that they don't have $400 saved. Right now, 47% of people don't have... And, and why? It's not because people wake up saying, I want to be financially unsafe successful. I want to have a stressful life. It's because they get trapped into that mindset of just go to work, go to church, come home, go to work, go to church, come home. Didn't make any money. Go to work, go to church, and you just keep doing that. So Z, I want to ask you with your career, have you ever gotten to a point where with the optometry clinic, because you started with a bang and you grew this thing and you were motivated to build this business, but did you ever get to a point where you said, I don't know. I just kind of want to mail it in this year. Or do you ever get to me? You ever got to a point where you've had to jolt yourself back into excitement to grow? Or have you ever been stuck? <laughs> paddles. Get the paddles <laughs> over there. Boom. Clear. Well, I, I don't think so. Not me personally, because I haven't reached some of the goals that I want to reach. Hmm. Though, sometimes I find um, young people out there. I find people out there that have a business that start singing it in. And other people look at them and say, oh, my gosh, are you what are you doing? But you know what? Everybody has their level of comfort. You know, they may look at your house and say, I don't, I'm not, I don't need a bigger house. I don't need to drive a fancier car. I'm happy. I'm content. So th the point is, is that if you are in that, in your business or in your, you know, in your, your business mindset, that's okay. But for all the people out there that say, you know, I'd like to grow mine a little bit more. I'd like to do a little bit more. I'd like me to open up another branch, another business. I want to grow. This show is for you. Now, Z, I want to ask you this because this is something I see a lot. And I, I see you do it personally. It's, it's awesome. But John Maxwell, okay, he has, he's one of the best-selling best author. He wrote 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. He has this quote, and he says, the higher the individual's ability to lead, the higher the lid is on its potential. Mm, wow. And yeah. so I'm, the question I have for you is I know that you look around a lot of times and you say, what is my biggest limiting 
membrane. Yes. So what advice would you have would you have for somebody who's in this adult with a gray hair face? They have a great business and they've realized that they're the only one who really has a lot of maturity in the business and and, and, and they're not you know, they're the only source of wisdom in the business. What would you say to somebody who feels like they're successful, but they're surrounded by idiots? They, they're, no one knows what they're doing. And, and you know, because you have to either become, you know, bitter or, 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 or try to get better. But what <laughs> advice would you have for somebody who's in that phase? Get better, no, not bitter. What you have to do is you have to take a real hard assessment of the people you have around you because really they, they help drive, row the boat, if you want to say. And if you don't, if you're not hiring people that are smarter than you and you are not empowering them to know parts of the business better than you do, then it's hard to get out of this phase. It's, it's hard to, you know, to, to get out of the mature adult phase of your business. Cause if you're the only one that knows how to do everything and you keep hiring people that, that are your limiting membranes, you're, you're going to be stuck there. You're listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 11. Now, this is something I watch you do because I, you, you are viewed as a source of wisdom by me, just so we kind of know our roles here. I, I started Thrive 15, our online business coaching platform, but you're the CEO. And the reason why I look to you as a source of wisdom is because you... Uh, uh, do things the right way. I watch you pick up trash. I watch you bring in a positive attitude when you're upset. I watch you choose to be happy when you're going through something. I watch you do that. And I watch a lot of other business owners. I've been guilty of it too, where you just get frustrated with those around you. You begin to just, ah. And so I, I want to ask you, how do you right now at this, at this level five, the stage five, where you're the adult with the gray hair, you're making some money. How do you begin to become a source of wisdom for your team as opposed to being a guy who's upset at everybody? Well, here again, you, you started empowering them. You say, listen, this is your area. Own it. Do it. Become it. And then what happens is you hold them accountable for that. And if you happen to hire someone who's not smart enough, brave enough, eager enough to take that on, then you get somebody else in there. But at some point, you know, I had someone the other day ask me, they said, hey, do you take this certain eye insurance? And I said, I have no idea. But I do know the person who is my expert in that area. Right. So you've, you've empowered the team. Yes. And this is an intentional thing. So if, you, yes. so if someone's on your team right now. Otherwise, I'd have to, everybody has to ask me every question. Okay, here's the thing behind the thing, though. <laughs> here's the thing behind the thing. There's a question behind the question. Uh, have you ever had a really sweet person, uh -huh. a, a nice man, oh, yeah. ni a nice man, He's very nice. You, you see him. And he a kinda, gentleman. He, he talks. He's kind of very Jim Gaffigan-y. He mm. says, hi, Dr. Selner. How are you? You're so nice. Just thank he's you. a sweet man. He's yes. a sweet man. Have you ever looked at the sweet man and you've realized that he's not competent? He doesn't have the competency needed to be empowered. He just is mentally absent. He's, you know, he's doesn't, he doesn't want to grow to the next level. And have you ever had to fire that guy or move him to a new seat or do you, do you mean to make room for those empowered people? Have you ever had to fire somebody? I mean, come on. Yes. Is this an often thing though? I mean, when you look, even when sometimes, are, I mean, if you, you know, I've got multiple businesses and we're growing at multiple, at different rates. And so, you know, you have to, um, you have to make sure you figure out who that limiting membrane is. You got to figure out who's slowing, you know, who's not rowing. You look at this side of the boat and this side of the boat, Hey, you're not rowing your oar. So you have to constantly be doing that. And that's one of the questions I always ask my managers. <laughs> A lot of times I'll say, Hey, who's your weakest link? And in what areas? Well, Jack Welch calls that system differentiation from his book, Winning. Yes. So what he does is he asks everybody, if you're listening right now, this is something everybody should do right now. Go ahead and make a list of all your teammates. It's wait, wait, wait. If they're driving, they probably shouldn't do it. Well, yeah, because you're in your car right now, probably. So here's what you do. You pull over that car first. You, you put that car Find in park. Find a truck stop. Yeah, yeah, get over. Th there you go. Go to, a, go to a quick trip. We love quick trips. Okay, so you go in there to the quick trip. Maybe get yourself a coffee. Now you're in the car. You're sitting there. And what you want to do is make a list of all the members of your team. Be careful where you put this piece of paper, though. Be very careful. <laughs> very be careful. Be careful yes. what, what, what devices you're syncing your phone to right now. But go ahead and make a list of all the people on your team. Uh huh. And then Jack Welch says to grade them on an A, B, or C level. Now, the A's are people, that's that top 20%, and you go, man, this guy or this, 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 this woman, if I mentor them, if I coach them, if I pour my heart into them, they have what it takes to run the department, to run the business, and then the B's, you go, those are good people. We need the B's. The world's built on B's. You get there the spine of the business. You need to tell them thank you, and you need to point to them and say, that's an A player. If you want to become an A player, this is what you need to do. Sure. And then the C is where you go, hey, um, you, this is the third time I've talked to you about doing that checklist. And if you don't do it again, um, 
really, I'm giving you 30 days to improve, or this is your third strike, or this is your first strike, whatever, but you're telling them, if you don't improve, I'm making room for the next person for your replacement by, you know, and promoting you to customer status. Yes. So that's kind of the idea there, Josh. Am I making sense? Yeah. So basically in, in this stage here, you're basically trying to, you're training your people, you're equipping them to basically do what you do. Is that correct? You are equipping them to do what you do and you have to make sure that they will, that you don't want to delegate to somebody who doesn't have the mental capacity. It's basically, do, do they have the want to? Do they yeah. want to do it? And then do they have the competency to do it? So Clay, I want to ask you, because you, I've seen you work in, with, a, I, I, there's one medical facility I can think of. I won't mention their name, but they had a hard time training people. And I watched the doctor getting furious at his staff. In particular, I remember him thinking, I remember looking at him going, you are looking at your staff with contempt and I've been guilty of it where he just looks around and he's like, idiot, idiot, idiot. <laughs> he's with, with his eyes though. And I watched you go in there and teach them specifically uh, how to do, how to, he, you taught him how to teach his people. Why is it so hard for people? Why do you see this all the time? Why is it so hard for people to teach their people? Well, I think the big piece of it is simply because we so often in the workforce, we so often take good workers and we immediately promote them into a management position. And we forget to do this whole thing called team building. We forget to tell them how to actually draw people to you, how to build relationships. Guys, it is uh, so common, I'm finding over and over and over, that out in the corporate world, we forget Yet we never train people how to build teams around you. As I was a coach for 15 years building teams, that was the season where I learned how to do that. But if we don't do that, then all of a sudden we have these managers and we say, here, go lead all of these people. And they don't know how to do it. I'm going to hit the old Billy button because I've been guilty of doing that there. Oh. Billy. Anytime I catch myself doing one of these mistakes, I'm going to hit my O Billy button today, okay? I'm going to be in the, hitting the O Billy button often there, Josh. Yeah. I love the O Billy button. It lets everyone know that you're not perfect, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. We're talking about how to take your business dreams into reality. Turn them into reality, guys. We're going to move on to stage six, the Bruce Wayne stage coming up next. You don't want to miss it because uh, it's Batman time, guys. We'll be right back. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. This show is brought to you by Adobe Creative Cloud. If you're a photographer, graphic designer, video editor, podcaster, business owner, or just creative genius, this is for you. All of your creative tools, all in one place. Creative Cloud includes the entire collection of creative apps for desktop, from favorites like Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator, to new tools like Adobe Experience Design. Check this out, you can create podcasts seamlessly in high quality with Adobe Audition. Did you miss the exposure or looking to create a stunning and beautiful photo? You gotta download Lightroom, okay? The latest release of Adobe Creative Cloud is here with incredible new features in Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, and all of your favorite apps, plus millions of Adobe stock assets and new premium images are built right in. So you can turn your brightest ideas into your best work fast. Make sure that you check out Adobe Creative Cloud. It's at adobe.com. Once again, Adobe Creative Cloud at adobe.com. Welcome back to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. Uh, Josh Merrill here with Clay Clark. Dr. Z and our special guest, Clay Stairs. Hey, we are talking about the eight business stages to turn your business dreams into reality. We're currently on stage six, the Bruce Wayne stage, which would, you know, uh, tell you why I'm playing this music. Uh, but tell us, what is stage six, the Bruce Wayne stage? Well, the, the Bruce Wayne stage is basically at this point, you've successfully trained the people you already have. Okay. You've, you've successfully trained the people you already have. And you, you're, you're beginning to get to this phase where you're realizing, I need some new people. I need to bring on some new members of the team. I need to bring on some people that really um, want it. They get it. They're all about going to the next level. And so you have to really factor in these seven C's. That's kind of the pirate talk here, Dr. Z. It's the pirate segment. So Yes, exactly. And if you, um, you know, I have a great pirate joke. Anybody want to hear it out there? I, I for one, would love to hear it. Uh, Clay, as our guest, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you this. What is a pirate's favorite letter? I don't know. Please tell me. 
most people say say R R. Oh, yeah, now, then I God. say no, no, it's the C. R R R R R. Um, hey, wow. but there, there are more pirate <laughs> wow. jokes to come, so you Thank get ready. You. Yes. All right, so don't Z, touch that dial. <laughs> that got you. That got you on that one. Z, are you ready? I am ready. Okay, here we go. So we're going to do the seven Cs, okay? So when we get into the first scene, again, this is where you've already trained the people you have, but you have to go find some new people. You got to. I want more A's. I want more A's. You a just, players. A, B, C. Yeah, I want more A players. And so how do you find and hire, attract? I mean, how's the process of getting great, great employees? Because great employees make a great business as you, we all know it's super super important though you're always recruiting because if not what's going to happen is you're going to lose a key player and the whole thing is going to fall apart yep. so you have to always be recruiting always be recruiting so we're going to get into this first cz here we go competent Ooh, it's a, it's a skill factor to consider does the potential employee have the necessary skills or education let's just start there they have the skills or the education to even be considered for the job so competent well, and this is what I see a lot. I see a lot of people that hire. I, I saw this the other. This was about four weeks ago, and I won't. I won't give any other details. But I saw a person who's a very good friend of mine. He hired a guy, and I'm yep. not, not exaggerating. He hires the guy. He brings him in. He says, "Clay, I want you to meet this guy. He, he's going to be a manager of this business. He's going to be great." And I meet the guy, and I'm not kidding. He goes, "Well, I, I am um, excited to meet you, Mr. Clark." Um, so and I'm, no problem if you have a thick accent, no issue. And I said, so uh, what are you excited most about about the job? Well, I you know I was looking for a job and saw it on Indeed, you know. And I'm like, okay, so what you know what was your previous job? Well, man, I hadn't had a job in a long time, you know. So I'm just, I mean, I'm excited to be there, you know. Overall, I mean, I want, and you just you look and you go, does this guy really have the competence? I don't want to judge him based off of the fact that he has no energy. Yeah. And he hasn't had a job in a couple Low of years. Low energy, huh? And then he yeah. just, he was he loved the job because he found it on Indeed. That was the number one deciding factor. Um, I, I, I want, <laughs> maybe we need to test his skills a little bit, but all I would say is you have a phrase you say all the time called hire fast, fire fast. I love it. Talk to me about it. So let's say we, we find this guy and you're looking at him and you're going, he seems like he wants it. He seemed good in the interview, but yet he hasn't had a job in a couple of years. He's not, he didn't just articulate himself very well, but maybe he can do it. What is your thought? I mean, what, how does the hire fast, fire fast philosophy work for you? Well, once we go through these seven C's, if you find someone that, that checks the boxes and you say, okay, I'm going to, and, and they're telling you they check the boxes. I mean, obviously, until you get them working, you don't know. Um, but they, they tell you they, they check all the boxes and you hire them. And then guess what? A week into it, you realize this person isn't competent. They said that they had this skill level and they don't. They said they can do X, Y, Z and they can't. You know, the Imagine other day, at the other day at Thrive15.com, we hire a guy said, hey, I'm a coder. I can code like nobody's business. I'm, I'm a, a coding coder. I'm machine. A I'm a coder. I'm a coder. Code on. And uh, we said, okay, here's your first assignment. Code this. Code this. And then we heard, boop, 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 boop. hit your cricket button over there. I don't even have a cricket button. I, well, you know what? I'll tell you what here. I need to be faster on my cricket button, but... But the, but the thing is, you what you're you're what you're doing is you're you are exaggerating because he didn't just hit the he didn't just do this. He then said, "Do you guys know where the, the coffee is?" And then, <laughs> oh, so, no. and then he went to the coffee, no. and I'm not kidding. It's like ten thirty because you were you were you were exaggerating. You, he made him sound like he had it together. But the guy ten thirty. Then at ten thirty, I'm looking at my watch. Ten thirty, he goes. Uh, uh, so like, what time do you guys normally go to, to lunch? You know what I mean? And I'm going, <laughs> it's 1030. I'm not making this up at one o'clock. I said, where's the guy? You know, I, he calls me, he says, what about second breakfast? He goes, bro, I'm going <laughs> to about to, second breakfast. I'm going to have to leave a little bit early, but, uh, do you, I was curious, do you guys pay for internet at home? Cause I was going to try to work from home today. No. <laughs> I swear to you, I cannot oh. make this up. And so these are real scenarios. So we think he tells us he's competent wow. is the point you hire him. And guess what? After a couple, three days, you know, he doesn't have the competency and that's why you fire fast. You don't oh. sit there and go, okay, well maybe, uh, maybe he will start to code magically, uh, tomorrow. And to, to, to quote you, I, I, I want to make sure, uh, not only if, not only do we have a chance to mentor millions with our program, but you mentor me all the time. And one of the moves you've taught me is you say, if, if it's not working out, don't get all personal. Just say, hey, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's just not working out. So I called the guy, boop, 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 boop. Hey, and he goes, yeah, bro, what's up, bro? This is like, I'm not kidding. This is the second day. He's at home again at four o'clock. He left early and he goes, what's up, bro? And I'm like, hey, um, you've been here for two days. You haven't coded, coded any lines of code. He's like, I'm just trying to get into the code. And I'm like, well, you haven't logged on to your 
Twitch system. Yeah, we, can, yeah, we can see. Yeah. And he goes, okay, was well, that like, let's, can we meet tomorrow about expectations? Because I, I said, hey, listen. Oh, <laughs> so no. I said, hey, I just want you to know it's not working out. It's just not working out. You're listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 11. Boom. We're talking about uh, the seven C's of hiring good people. We're going to move on to number two because we just did number one, competent. And number two, you got to be capable. Now, this is a problem because Clay Stairs, I want to I want to pick on you. I'm going to oh. talk about your football career for a second. Mm. Were you pretty good in high school? I was OK in high school. And you walked on for who? The Oklahoma Sooners. Boomer. You walked on for the University of Oklahoma I Sooners. I bet you didn't deflate any of the footballs on the Sooner squad. <laughs> <laughs> our, our, our guy in the studio, he's he's kind of booing there. He's I guess he's not a Sooner guy. But yeah. here's the thing is, so you, you walked on. Yes. And were those dudes massive? I mean, t- talk to me what was going through your head the first time you saw practice drills or I mean, how how big were some of these guys compared to you? Oh, I remember that. I, now, I was all of about 150 pounds soaking wet with my <laughs> uniform on. Wow. I remember lockering just down a little ways from Marcus Dupree. You probably remember Marcus number 22. Oh, my gosh. And it just seemed like the more pads he took off, the bigger he got. He it, was huge. But you wanted to be on the team. Oh, yeah. So you had you were you were competent. I mean, you could catch a pass. Mm-hmm. You could run. You could kind of knew the plays, right? You were good in high school. Yeah. But were you capable to go against Marcus Dupree and hold your own? Uh, not in his position. Uh-huh. No, I was not. But my capability was, for me, was predominantly my speed. My, da- alive. my dad and I, we talked about I could this. run away from him. You How were fast that? enough to avoid I people. I was fast enough to avoid people. My dad, he played high school basketball in, in Baylor, uh, er, er, in uh, Waco, Texas, near near the Baylor area there. And uh, anyway, my dad, he was a very, very good high school basketball player. He was six foot five. He was all conference. Wow. And he was telling me the other day about these stories because he's, you know, kind of, uh, he's going through some health issues. So he's telling me these stories and we're looking at old photos. And my dad says, he goes, there was a guy, he said, I went to Oral Roberts University and I decided I would try out for the team. Yeah. And there was a guy who used to just stuff, every time I would try to shoot the ball, he would reject me, block me. He's, now, my dad was like 19 points a game in high school. And he's like, this guy ate my lunch. I mean, every time I played him, I'm getting like nine points and I'm get fouling all the time and I'm just flailing around. And he says, I went to the ORU tryouts and that guy tried to get his shot off and another guy comes flying by and just pins the ball against the glass and starts talking to him about it. And he goes, I realize if the guy who beat me <laughs> is getting beat by that much, I don't even need to try out. He's like, so I just kind of went, I'm doing intermurals. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. So, I'm here for the cheerleading squad. Is exactly. this am I in the wrong line? I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, that, so the main thing is being capable. Okay. Don't, don't put people in a situation where if they can't type at all and they're 40 and they're a good person, don't put them in a job where they're like a professional transcriber. That's good. Don't put them in the position where they're data entry. Think about what are the skills they have and put them somewhere. And can people learn new skills? skills sure but not on your watch because that's going to be very 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 expensive boom we're talking about the seven c's of hiring good people uh we've got three through seven coming up and i gotta tell you dr z i could not be more excited about these that are coming up (laughs) well i me either because this (laughs) i tell you what if you stick to these and hire people that meet these criteria and you really follow them closely um, you will you will be much happier. You won't have to fire as many people. You'll have a much better working you know environment, and you'll get a lot more stuff done. And your That's credit right. score will go up. Your wall your, will be bigger. Your credit yeah. your credit score will go up. I like that. Yeah, yeah. it's always good. Your car will get nicer. It's going to be awesome. House will get bigger. It's going to be great. If you're uh, in, if you're into that kind of thing, <laughs> yeah. if you yeah. want that kind of thing, stay tuned. Exactly. You want all those things. Come back to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. We're going to be talking about the seven C's of hiring good people. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. My wallet's too big. For the professional looking man out there, this is for you. Are you tired of waiting for hours in disorganized barbershops around town? Are you maybe looking for an upscale haircut experience instead of being treated like a little kid? If either of these thoughts crossed your mind, then Elephant in the Room Men's Grooming Lounge is for you. The Elephant in the Room Men's Grooming Lounge is proud to offer a variety of packages and memberships for discerning men and regular customers who wish to maintain their tailored look while receiving discounts off of services and products. They're going to bring you in, they'll offer you a beverage, identify your style that you're going for, get you a tailored haircut from one of the professional stylists, wash your hair, and then style it afterwards so you could even go back to work. 
The experience is awesome. They even do cool things for members like a free nape shave on Mondays or a peppermint oil scalp massage on Tuesday. Check out one of the locations near you and book an appointment. You can check them out at EITRlounge.com or just dial 918-877-2219. Seriously, you're going to love it. 918-877-2219 or visit EITRlounge.com to book an appointment today. Welcome back to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. Right now, we're talking about the seven C's of hiring good people. Josh Merrill here with Clay Clark, Dr. Z, and our special guest, Clay Stairs. Uh, Okay, the first C of hiring good people, number one, competent, and number two, capable, Dr. Z. That's right, and let's follow that up with compatible. And what do we mean by that? Can the person get along with other colleagues? Is he going to respect his boss and other coworkers? And this is vital in the work environment. Why is that so, Clay? Well, because if you're not compatible, if you don't, if you haven't come through the doorway of culture, which we're going to talk about here in just a moment, but if you haven't come through the doorway of culture to where you're compatible in the company, you just don't fit. You might have the skill, you might have the knowledge, but you don't fit. And I find that over and over across the country as I'm talking to different business owners, that they are struggling having people fit. Yes, they can do the job, but nobody likes them. There was a guy in my hired in my office years ago, and neat, neat guy, and his previous job was, um, he was involved in uh, basically construction, and there's a lot of really, really neat people in the construction industry. Um, there was a lot of people who are just terrible in the industry, like me. I was the worst. I, mean, I worked hard, but I was the worst concrete guy, I'm sure, in the history of Minnesota. I, I doubt that. I, I, I was awful. And But we brought in a guy to, ru- to help work in our DJ company back when I used to own it called djconnection.com, and I brought him into the call center because he worked so so hard doing maintenance for us. And he said, sir, I'd really like to uh, work in your call center. And I thought this would be a great, great fit. He worked so hard down there. Very respectful guy, whatever. But I had never worked around people before. Like he's always down there working by himself, getting stuff done, doing maintenance. And one day a guy takes a lead because we it was sales lead. So if brides would call, they would go to djconnection.com. They would fill out the form and it would be a lead. And the first person who called him got to make the commission. That was the idea. And so he calls a lead after somebody else had called a lead. I remember he goes, I swear, I'm gonna, I will freak it, I will, I will break, I, will, I swear, give me, he, he literally has a chair. He picked up a chair. Oh my. And I go, what are you doing with the chair? <laughs> you know, and he's like, I swear, he told me, I, he, dude, he knew that was my deal. I swear, and, and it would, every day this would happen. Yeah. And you realize this guy, that wasn't his niche was dealing in a sales floor. He couldn't, and we always had these near violent outbursts. And I was like, you, you need to go back down to the he warehouse. He wasn't, he didn't check box three, compatible. <laughs> compatible. Another thing you find out too is some guys come in and they're not harmonious with the boss. You were talking about earlier, Clay, someone very close to you that's always wanting to sit there and argue and fight over things that has nothing to do with the job. Well, yeah. here, I want to come in and argue politics. I want to argue this. I want to argue that. They just, ugh, where's you out? Because in the hierarchy of Thrive15.com as, as the founder guy, um, I, I looked up at our business and I realized I needed to bring in a guy with some huge swag, with some unbelievable leadership with uh, a mass of a vast collection of soccer jerseys and i realized that was you and so you came on and we're building this massive it's called thrive 15 it's a massive online business coaching platform it's 24 7 business coaching it's awesome you're gonna love it but anyway you know you know why well why is that because you quit I mean, let's think of it. You were you were the best business coach in the world, and everybody wanted you to coach them. And you started coaching them, and you finally said, "I can only coach so many in one day." You would come in and you'd kind of wave at me, and I'm in the conference room for like 47 hours consecutively. So yeah. it's kind of a. I and, mean, we just uh, give you Adderall and just keep you up until we just just keep coaching all <laughs> yeah. the time. Well, I'll say this though, and I, I want to get on this point because um, you know the feedback thing is an issue. So when you tell me to do something, I don't always. Uh, uh, understand it. And actually I'm about, um, 10 years behind you in a lot of areas where there's things you've been through that I haven't been through yet. So I'm very good at building a company from you. If you you want to start a company and you want to grow that thing to a couple hundred employees, I've done it. I can do it. I can help you. But going from like 200 employees to like, you actually served on the board of a bank. I mean, I've never been like on the board of a bank, you know? And so, but when you tell me to do something, you know that I'm going to do it 
And I can say it wears me out when I give something, somebody something to do, something yeah. basic, and they alter it by 14% because they want to put their little spin on it yeah. or they want to argue with you about it. And I see the look in your face sometimes when, when somebody pushes back or argues with you over, when you're just giving them a, de- a declarative statement, please do this. Yes. And they push back. Why, why is that something you look for right away to go, is this person going to do what I ask or are they going to push back? Why is that so important for you that people do what you ask them to do as a leader? Well, if they're pushing back, if they're questioning you, then they really aren't, they don't respect you. They're not following your leadership role. So when you tell them to do something, if you have to explain to them, give them a 30 minute dissertation on why that's the best thing to do and why they should do it. And you have to sit there and debate with them whether they're going to do it, whether you can convince them it's the right thing to do. That's an, I mean, if you want to do that, go out, go for it. But I don't want to, I don't want to waste my day with that. Do I want to surround myself with just a bunch of blanket? Yes, people know, but I want people to also understand that as a leader, when I say, Hey, let's, let's do this. Let's do that. We do it. I mean, like coaching football, Clay, if you, if you said, Hey, let's run this play. And the whole team came over the sideline and said, I don't, I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't you really think, that's, I, you the think that's idea. You think that's, I don't know yeah. why, why is Billy running the ball? Uh, oh, Billy, why kinda, is he running the ball? I kind of want to do the Statue of Liberty play coach. That's kind of the play I want <laughs> We do. haven't done that in two yeah. games, <laughs> you know? Boom. I want to ask this real quick, the, the compatibility thing. Yeah. How, how do you test that when you're first hiring someone, when you first meet them? I did it today. Um, I brought in somebody who I thought would be a good fit. Um, she is, uh, by the way, I'm talking about you, Brooke, because I brought you in there and I gave Brooke assignments. And you know what she did? She did more than we've asked her to do every day. And anytime her boss has asked her to do something, her manager, she does it. And I've noticed that, you know what? She has an attitude to serve. She's getting along well with our culture. Our culture, we have a beautiful office, the Thrive, the Thrive 15 World Headquarters right here off of the, uh, it's right off the river. So it's in the, the river walk here in Jinx by the golf facility. It's beautiful. If we have a fun culture. It's upbeat. There's always fun music playing. It's kind of an open office environment. And people will come to me, new people sometimes, and they'll say, hey, can we turn off the overhead music? And kind of, <laughs> can I, is it okay if I work in the side room? Is, I mean, literally, People say, can I work in the side room? And I realize you're not going to fit into the culture. I'm not going to change the way I decorate my office to accommodate you. So, Brooke, good job. Good job, Brooke. Uh, Okay, when we come back, we're going to continue our conversation on the seven C's of hiring good people. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the one that I personally think is the most important. And to find out which one that is, you'll have to come back. Join us after the break. Uh, It's the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170s. Dr. Z. Josh, we're not looking for good people. These will guarantee great people. Boom. Are you looking to start or grow business? Then you are definitely going to have problems and questions along the way. You will find the answers to all of your business questions at thrive15.com. Thrive15.com provides online video-based business training taught by millionaires and successful entrepreneurs for less than a dollar per day. That's less than your daily coffee budget. It's no classrooms, no get rich quick seminars. These are trainings broken into 15 minute segments that get you the answers that you need. It's business school without the BS. I dare you to try a seven day free trial. Simply go to thrive15.com and the first 100 people will also receive a free downloadable for how to optimize your website. So stop wasting your time and money. Go to thrive15.com and get your business questions answered now. Welcome back to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. Josh Merrill here with Clay Clark, Dr. Z, and our special guest, Clay Stairs. We're talking about the seven C's of hiring great people. We're on number four. There you go. Commitment. And I love this one. I think this is one of the most important ones, Dr. Z. The C word. We're not talking about all those dudes out there who've been dating a chick for like four or five years and won't give her the ring. We're not talking hey, about that commitment. four years is okay. Four years four is okay. Right. Four years four, yeah. yeah. four is okay. Why you always got to bring that up, man? Come on now. <laughs> four years is fine. Four years. Is that how long you were? Yes. Oh, man. See, now you, I got to lecture you a little bit about commitment. So <laughs> She moved in, man, but I was just test driving. You know what I'm saying? I was just... <laughs> <laughs> what wow. you can't do? No, yeah. that's clear over there. Not me. Yeah. Commitment. Not me. Commitment. That wasn't, that wasn't me. So you know when you're when you're one of the one of the four sevens when you're trying to find a great hire is is the person committed. You know they've been jumping in and out of jobs like every six months. You, know, you look back on their resume and it's like every three months is a new job. That's not commitment. And and commitment always reminds me of my number. 
two rule in business. Ooh. What is your number two give rule? Me a little, in- give me a little. Give me a little. Give me a little. Yeehaw, Doctor uh, Z. I love farmyard analogies, particularly those that deal with the pig. America. All right, America, the American pig. It's a great animal, great beast. <laughs> you see here at breakfast, you want to be the pig and not the chicken. Why is that, Z? Well, you see, the pig is committed. The okay. pig gave his life for breakfast. The chicken was just a little involved. It just kind of laid an egg and thought, you know, hey, there you go. That's my involvement. I'm going to run over here and kind of scratch and peck around over here in the farmyard. But the pig, the pig stood up and said, you know what? You want bacon? I'm going to give you bacon. And he was committed. So you need commitment. And in business, you've got to be committed. Isn't that right, Clay? That is exactly right. An incredible analogy. Thank you. Are you advocating the death of all pigs? <laughs> Pardon? Are you advocating the death of all pigs? You well, hate- eventually, eventually, all all pigs die. I don't. Right, I mean, well, I don't want to spoil the end of the story, but uh, um, well, I'll let Josh I, just I, kind of rebound from that. I'm pretty upset about it. Currently, I've never known a pig to live forever. Currently, but I, that could change. He hates pigs. <laughs> he hates the pigs. Hey, we're talking about the seven C's of hiring great people. Uh, we're talking about commitment here, Clay. I mean, commitment, that's that's well, the biggest part. Well, commitment is the deal. If somebody is committed, and so I, how, I, how I test, how do you practically test if someone's committed? Um, what I do is I have people um, do uh, tests that are, they don't seem like they're a big test, but they're a test. Okay, so uh, this one young lady who works in our office, again, Brooke, I'm bragging on Brooke. This is Brag on Yay. Brooke Day. Wow, brag on, brag on job, Brooke. Brooke. I but like it. She came in. And, and she's rumor has it she's been doing a great job for our photography company, uh, EpicPhotosTulsa.com. A little Ooh. shameless plug there, but she's so she's doing a great job. And so we brought her in the office to go from part time on the weekends to full time. And so I gave her what kind of workload do you guess I gave her, Josh? Week number one. Week number one, I think that you probably gave her a mid level workload. What do you, Clay Stairs, if you had to guess? Definitely going mid level. I went high. Oh, oh I, went, I went big. I went well, big. It's Brooke because I want to say you know. What's enough that would almost crush the human mind? Because I'm just being real. I don't want you around me for this particular position if you can't handle a lot. I don't want to find out you can't handle a lot later. Ooh, so that first good. couple of days, I gave a lot of work to her. And not only did she get it done, I'm, I'm telling you, she came to me and she goes, uh, Mr. Clark, I got all my work done. It's Wednesday for, for the whole week. And I'm going, what time were you here last night? She goes, oh, I'd tell like 10 or something. I just, I just want to get it all done. I mean, okay, fine. You passed the test. You're committed. You're committed to being successful. So I want to move into this next one here, Josh. Yeah, yeah let's do it. Number five, this is character. Ooh. And mm-hmm. character, Z, you have a quote you talk about, how about how people don't change very often. What's your notable Here's how quote my quote goes. Here? Here's how my quote goes. People change seldom. Mm. So character deals with the honesty and integrity of a person. So if you hire someone that is not integrous, you're not going to make them integrous by sitting them down and saying, hey, um, <clears throat> let's don't lie and let's don't steal and, and let's, let's do things the right way. Ooh, baby, I, like it. I want to get real and raw with you, Z. Real and raw. Because I want to ask you the questions that people want to ask, Ooh, baby, like but it's like, you know, I, I don't, it's, this is what happens is I see a lot of entrepreneurs that say, hey. I own a business and technically my people are contractors, right? And so I can I mandate that they come to the job site on time? I see a lot of contractors who have contractors who work for them. You're a general contractor and you say, well, I can't technically make them show up on time because they're contractors. Or I see people who have employees who say, well, technically I can't really tell them to do this because of that. What are your, be real, be raw. At what point did, do you say enough is enough with character? When do you say, you, look, you have to be here on time. You have, I mean, how, do you, how, how much do you put up with there, Z? Can I go even bigger than that? No, please, please do. Please do. Please do. Can you give me a little, I want some real and raw music. I want something. Give me. I, I'm going to give you some real and raw music. The thing, the thing is, Z, is my, my human mind sometimes struggles struggles to get to, to get to a mental place where I can keep up with your your your, 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 your synapses are firing. I'm, so I'm going bigger. I'm going bigger. Okay. I'm going bigger than that. I'm telling everybody out there, if you own a business, if you're the boss, character starts with you. There you go. Oh, Bring now it. I'm going to tell you something right now. You'd be surprised how many business owners that I've talked to over the years that have had a problem with, with uh, their employees stealing from them. Yeah. And yet, when I talk to them... Guess what? They're taking cash out of the business. Shocking. They're taking money. They're taking stuff that they don't report to Uncle Sam. 
And they say the same thing. They say, well, uh, the government's not spending the money correctly. They've got plenty of money. They don't need that money. I'm going to pocket this cash and not report it. And guess what? Their employees see that. And guess what they do? They get a lot of that character issue straight from the top. Didn't feel so good. Didn't feel so good. (laughs) You're listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 11. All right. Uh, listen, we've got uh, uh, Clay Stairs. He's our special guest today, the school teacher turned millionaire. You've got a special giveaway uh, that, that you want to tell us about. Sure. Yeah. The, uh, the Again, most of the entrepreneurs that I speak with throughout the week, they are in a place where their company has grown and they have been successful. Who knew they would be successful? But unfortunately, their success is crushing them because they have not grown with their company. Ugh. They are still trying to do the work. Yeah. You know, what is it? If you want it done right, do you got to do it yourself. They're still in that mindset. So what I have for the first 15 people to go to my website at www.claystairs.com, C-L-A-Y-S-T-A-I-R-E-S.com for the first 15 people that go and sign up for my grow report. I will give you, first of all, I, I want to give you guys a signed book that I have written called Grow, the field guide for personal development so that you can grow and catch up to your company. Do those books have words in them? I mean, all of them? Those books definitely have words, and they even have pictures, Clay. Oh, good. I did, no, I get it. I, 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 did, did. I did add some pictures. But also, for those same 15 people, I want to give you guys a free seat at the table at my next winning workshop. All right. That we have coming up soon. Winning workshop. This one's going to be on time management. And again, the main reason I find over and over and over why people aren't getting things done is, Clay, I just don't have time. Do you have to wear pants to your workshops? I mean, can I show up? Like, definitely. Can I, wear, can I wear a soccer jersey? Can I wear a soccer jersey with Soccer pants? jersey is good, and definitely you do need to wear pants because the problem here is 70% of employees work beyond their scheduled time. What? And on weekends, 70% are working beyond their time each week and on weekends. So, I want to do this time, work, uh, this time management workshop and give you a practical guide to help you walk through your days and be more productive. I call it the daily steering wheel. Boom, that's Clay Stairs. Clay Stairs, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, we're going to come back with the second hour. But first, Clay, you've got this Thrive 15 thing I want you to tell us about. you got 20 seconds. Well, here's the deal. I mean, what would it be worth to you if you had a business coach available 24-7 every day? What if you could come to unlimited workshops? Like in my workshops? pocket? I could just pull it out anytime? Well, on, online, technically. In person workshops, uh, proven templates, downloadables, everything, all, all the answers to your business questions, it would be worth at least seven dollars maybe seventy thousand dollars i don't know check it out thrive15.com it'll change your life and your wallet are you a business owner you need to ask yourself right now how are you backing up your files and important documents most businesses have no system for the files in their business. If this is you, you got to use Dropbox. At least sign up for one of their 30-day free trials. Real talk, it's the secure file sharing and storage solution that employees and IT administrators trust. You get as much space as needed at no additional cost. You get unlimited file recovery and versioning, basically creating new versions, and valuable admin controls for secure sharing and collaboration with Dropbox for business. You got to check this out. After using Dropbox, you'll definitely feel more secure knowing that a virus or power surge can't ruin your computer and your entire business. Try full access to Dropbox business for 30 days. Head over to dropbox.com to get started. Again, dropbox.com to get started. Welcome back to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. Josh Merrill here with business coach Clay Clark. Boom. Dr. Z. That's right. Shout out to all our listeners in Muskogee. Muskogee. And for hour two here, we've got a special guest. He's a mortgage banking guru, okay? Uh, he's, uh, I mean, he's awesome. He's an awesome guy. I like him. His name's Steve Currington. How you doing, Steve? Uh, it's actually stevecurrington.com. Thank That's you. That's right. You know, I always forget that. <laughs> stevecurrington.com. Um, great. Thanks for having me, guys. Great to have you here. Okay. Uh, we are talking about the eight business stages to turn your business dreams into reality. We're currently on stage six 
the Bruce Wayne. And inside of that, we've been talking about the seven C's of hiring great people. Number one, you got they got to be competent. Number two, capable. Number three, compatible. Number four, committed. Uh, committed. They got to have that commitment. Number five, character. And right now we're on number six, culture. What was the name of Bruce Wayne's assistant, his butler guy, his Alfred. right hand? Alfred. Alfred. And Alfred. So Alfred. And then who was the guy that hung out with, with uh, Batman all the time? Robin. Robin. Right. So if you're listening right now, I'm just saying to you, who's your Robin? Who's your Alfred? This is why it's called the Bruce Wayne phase is because this guy surrounded himself with a team who made it possible for him to be I'm Batman. Because if not, he would be going, how the heck do I make this suit? How do you make a suit? How do I make a Batmobile? How do I, you know, Robin, where's Robin? Where's, you know, if where's he, my I mean, breakfast? Yeah, I mean, I mean but he, if you noticed in Batman, I know it's fictional, but he was always able to like have these cool gadgets and cool tools because Alfred's always working around the clock making these things. Robin's running around, you know, picking them up. He's, Robin's running around to Arthur Greeno's Chick-fil-A at 71st and Garnett picking up all that chicken, you know, so he's able to focus on, on doing some big things. So what we're talking about now is this, this next C here, okay, is this whole C of culture. It's, it's culture, okay? So if, if you bring somebody in, you want to make sure that they, they do fit that culture, that, that they are somebody who is going gonna to fit in with your, with your team. We talked about compatible. How's it different? Well, culture, in my mind, it's where it's additive. You, if you come into a culture and you take away from the culture or you just you have, you don't have a positive impact, then you're hurting the culture. So it's kind of like um, I have five kids. And uh, it, when, it was a few years ago when my kids were still small. They would shamelessly pee in pools. So when Z asked my kids to come over and swim in his pool, he invited my, my wife and I and our kids to swim at the pool. I was so worried. I'm like, they're going to be in the pool. I'm gonna, you see the yellow everywhere. And I'm like, they're going to do it. No. And thankfully, they did not do it, at least that I know about. But just a little bit of pee in your office pool kills the culture. So I want to ask you here, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> right? This is true. It it's does. True. It's, I mean, it's a fact. I just, fact peed, I just peed a little bit on your office pool. But anyway, I mean, it'd be weird. So I want to ask you this. You have a fun culture at yeah. TLC. So talk to me about why is it, why have you chosen to have a fun culture? What kind of people do you look for to fit in that culture? Talk to me about it. Well, I think you have to, for me, it's, it's following along with your personality because if you're, I'd like to have fun. I'm a fun guy and there's times to be serious, of course, but you know, Clay about the pee in the pool thing. We say this, if you had a beautiful glistening bowl of, uh, of cherries that were water kissed, perfect, right? You threw it a, mm. just perfect. perfect. And I threw a roach right on top of that. Would you touch any one of those? That's roachtastic. No. no, that's the equivalent of having the wrong person mm. in the having the pee in the pool. It's the same thing. It's just like when someone doesn't fit, it's that you're roaching your bowl of cherries kind of thing. Have you ever had a good person who's a good person, but they they're they're, they're nice people. They're good people. You maybe went to church with them. You knew them through a friend, and they're great. They're just not great for your office. Yeah. So we what we do is we focus on good fit because there's and we tell people it's, there's a lot of good people, a lot of qualified people that maybe just aren't a good fit within your company. And that's what it comes down to. You're not a bad person. We love you. We think you're great, but you, you don't fit. And if we can figure that out. So let's say they do let's fit. Think. Let's say they do fit. Now we're talking about our next, our next C, which is compensation. So they do fit. You want to pay people and you want to pay people what they're worth and you don't want to overpay. I see a lot of, we, we get emails. People always go to the Thrive Time Show. They'll go up there and you, there's, a, there's a button you can click where you can ask us any business questions. So we have hundreds of those flying in all the time. And people will always ask, how much do you pay? I don't want to underpay. I don't want to overpay. I've been reading this magazine about it. Z, how do you determine compensation, my friend? How do you do it? Well, the good news is if you're getting to compensation, they've checked six out of the seven boxes Ooh, or you think they have. Yeah. Right. Right. And so now you're excited because if you're talking money, then that means that you want them on your team. Right. You want to bring them on your team. Right. And so what I've always done, my attitude's always been, hey, if this is an A player, I'm assuming they are. Yeah. They checked all the first six boxes. I'm assuming they're going to follow through with those, right? And then you say, I always ask, sit them down and say, um, you know, hey, you're a number one draft pick for me. And what's it going to take to get you on my team? And what if they say this? So uh, I feel like uh, with the presence of my talent and skill and my overall just vast knowledge of a really, I mean, and without me, I kind of look at you as being somebody you need, you would need that. You, need, you, you can't code possibly by yourself. You can't do it. You need me. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of offers. Let's just say people know me. I'm, I'm kind a, of a big, big deal. I'm a big deal. Yes. <laughs> you it. know, what, what say you? What would you, what would you say if I said that to you? Well, if you said that to me, I probably went, I don't think I filled out those six 
previous boxes correctly because so true. Uh, so so true. True. Yeah, <laughs> because I'm like you're you're not the guy I want. But a lot of times what they'll do is they'll say, hey, listen. Here, here's my expectations and here's what I want. And if it's within a certain parameter, I've never let a few thousand dollars one way or the other just keep me from signing a number one draft pick. I mean, it's a number one draft pick for a reason. I mean, we're talking right. about A plus people. We're talking about people that can help you move the needle. We're talking about people that checked all those first six boxes. So this is somebody you want on your team. You're listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 11. So assuming that you get these seven C's together, what begins to happen is now you have a great team of people. You got Robin, you got Alfred. Yeah, was there any other Bat movie? Girl? Bat Girl, Nightwing, Not, Ooh, Nightwing. Commissioner Gordon. How much oh, of this are wow. you? Oh, you got to have a Commissioner Gordon. Do you but, have a the source right there? What do you call it? Like, are you, you got to Come on, it's called his brain. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Thank you, it's called Josh. His brain. Very impressive. So here's the thing: is so what happens is is once you've got to that Bruce Wayne level, you look up and you go. I own this, man. Like, I'm on fire. Look at me. I've, I'm doing great, man. But where's the next level? What is the next level, Josh? Once I get to the Bruce Wayne, I've got that. I'm already done. Boom, drop the mic. You know, what do I do next? Well, you got to move on to stage seven, which is the Elon Musk stage. Great stage. Now, Clay, can you tell us specifically who Elon Musk is? What are we talking about? Yeah, if you ever bought something online from uh, using PayPal, that's Elon Musk's company. He's one of the co-founders of that. Then the homie took the money. He grew up, he's an immigrant, by the way. He came over with nothing, and he helped build PayPal. Then he takes the billion bucks he has, a billion dollars, puts it all into Tesla and into SpaceX. He's the CEO at, at the same time of two companies, of, of Tesla. So he's like, he says, oh, by the way, I want to transform the auto industry. By the way, with no experience, well, what was your background? Oh, I helped make online payment easier. What? So he does that. And then he says, hey, why don't I replace NASA? I mean, could you imagine being a friend with somebody and you talk to him and you say, so, uh, so Elon, what do you want to do? Well, I think I'm going to take over for uh, where, you know, NASA. I want to, I think we could do it better than they do. And by the way, I'm also going to make electric cars. And then he says, and by the way, I want to make the world more environmentally responsible by putting solar panels everywhere. And I'm going to start a company called Solar City. The guy, if you look him up currently, as of today, he's worth $12.7 billion. Is that all? That's it. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm very impressed. But the thing is, the Elon Musk level is this is something I think that we all want to get to. We all want to get to this next, next level, to this next level. And so at this point, what happens is, is you've been able to coach up your, your team to the point where you are dominating the marketplace. You are doing great. Things are happening. But now you have to work in concert with your team to begin to refine your business systems. So Z, I watch you do this with your auction all the time. You have a great team. Is the team perfect? No. Are are you ever done recruiting? No, but you you're able to step back in that massive, massive parking lot. Where's this located, Z? By the way, where's where's your auto auction located? It's on the southwest corner of 244 and Mingo, just north of our roundabout we have Ooh, in town. Yay. The roundabout, Mingo and Admiral, the, the a roundabout. Circle. So what happens is you can sit back and you're able to look at it from a distance and say, what are my biggest limiting factors. So the Elon Musk phase is getting to a point where you can sit back and look. And so I want to ask you, as you've taken a step back and looked at your auto auction from afar, what are some of the biggest limiting factors that you've noticed over the last couple of years and how did you fix them? Well, one of the things we, I noticed when we first built it, we, we built it with three lanes, what we call three lanes. In other words, three cars can be selling simultaneously. The need grew so fast that we quickly went to five lanes. And then not too long ago, we actually completed out the, the seventh lane with more bathrooms. I mean, I was having to bring in porta potties all around the place. To I mean, it was crazy. So I'm like, I need more bathrooms. Boom. I need more lanes because we have more cars to sell. And those guys are going to stand there for a day and a half buying cars. You know, they're you know, they're wanting to go, go, go. So, And then inside, just to give you a context, Steve, you're a car guy. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite car you've purchased recently? Uh, maybe a uh, Bentley Continental GT Super Sports. Do you know about these cars? Is this a good car, Z? Yeah, it's a great car. Yeah, it's not bad. It's all right. It's like 621 horsepower. Wouldn't it does okay. Wouldn't drive it. it. Doesn't seem too clear. My Honda Accord's pretty nice. <laughs> no, anyway. So is anyway. it a hybrid? No. Okay. Well, then it's, it's off a, my It's list. electric, not. <laughs> I'm I'm judging you right now. Okay, I just want you so in my eyes. Ahead. But anyway, so the thing is, you know, you you you, you know you, you appreciate cars, Steve. You've probably been to an auction or two. Yours yours is a dealer only auction though, right? Correct. See? How many cars can you sell or have you sold on a Friday? Because it's one day a week, right? Yeah, we, we every every sale is on Friday. And the biggest we've done is almost 1,400 cars. Um, but typically, we run about 800 every week. So 1,400 cars. Now, how many hours are you open every Friday? 
Well, the auction starts at noon and it's over when we run the last car. And that typically can be anywhere from, you know, two and a half to three hours on the bigger sale. It might have gone a little bit longer than that. So if it's four hours, let's just say, now I'm, check my math here. If you're listening right now, do the math with me. Again, pull over. Don't do this while driving. But a standard hour on average approximately has 60 minutes, correct? Uh, that's just math, I believe. So right. there's 240 minutes in, in, in four hours. And if you're going to sell 1,400 cars in 240 minutes, you're selling 5.83 cars a minute. Bro, that, that's a lot of cars. That sounds about right. How are you doing that? How, how do you, do, I mean, do you, how do you do that? How do you go sell it? I don't do it. That's the beautiful part of it. <laughs> he has being five a, lanes. Being a, a seven now, being, seven an, now. <laughs> being an Elon Musk, you, you roll seven at a time, baby. We're supposed to work together on this show and you're supposed to give me the specific details. So you're, you're not going to give it, you're not going to tell us the details yet. He has people for that, Clay. I have people for that. That's that's the move. That's where everybody wants to get to this level of it. I mean, we have each lane has a, a certain team of people that work that lane. You have so many drivers assigned to that lane to actually drive the cars through that particular lane. We we have uh, we have an auctioneer for each lane. We have a bid spotter for each lane. We have a couple computer people working each lane, and so so you have seven cars simultaneously running through there at the same time. And um, if you want one of them, you raise your hand and say that mine. Dr. Z is the real Slim Shady. He's rocking the Elon Musk stage. And further, when we come back on the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170, we're going to be talking about stage eight, dropping the mic, which is exactly what I'm going to do. We'll be right back. Boom. Okay, managing your money has not been easier. Mint.com is the solution to ambiguous and blind money management. You can effortlessly create budgets that are easy to stick to or even use one that they make for you. Design budgets that are appropriate for now and put you in position to succeed in the future. Get notifications for weird account charges and receive personalized tips for eliminating fees and saving more money. Check your credit with a free credit score and explore what you can do to improve it to be able to purchase the things that you really want later. Link up the app on your phone and money management on the go has never been easier. You can even link up your portfolio accounts so you can see your bank accounts and stock values side by side. Mint.com, you gotta go check it out and you can sign up for free. Again, that's mint.com, M-I-N-T dot com. Go sign up right now. It's definitely a game changer for money management. Welcome back to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. Josh Merrill here with business coach Clay Clark, Dr. Z, and our special guest, Steve Currington.com. Hey, we're talking about the eight business stages to turn your business dreams into reality. Right now, we are on stage seven, the Elon Musk. We're going to get to stage eight, dropping the mic, but we've got to dive into the Elon Musk stage, Clay. Well, I think a lot of people want to know, hey, that's great. I know about this this phase, but how do I do it? What do I specifically yeah. do to get to that level? It's so cool you have these auctions, but what do I do on the daily? And so I'm going to read you a notable quotable that I found from a guy named Clayton Christensen. Well, who's, Ooh, who's really? that guy? Because he has your- all these guys named Clay. Oh, I'm, always, I'm always quoting these Clay people. But here's the thing is, he is at, at the Harvard Business School. I've never heard of Harvard. I don't even like Harvard. Harvard. What is Clay that? Man. They have a business school? Yeah, so Harvard, they're, they're, they're kind of a big deal. But he says this, okay? He's a professor there. He says, in a startup, listen, if this is you, listen to this. This could change your life. It's huge. Ooh. In a startup company where no, there are no processes in place to get things done, then everything that is done must be done by the individual by individual resources. In this circumstance, it would be risky to draft someone with no experience to do the job because in the absence of processes that can guide people, does it sound like you? Experienced people need to lead, but in, in an established company where much of the guidance to employees is provided by processes and it is less dependent upon the manager's individual detailed hands-on experience, then it makes more sense to hire and to promote people who can learn from experience. What's he saying? What he's saying, when you have these processes and step-by-step -step checklists and systems, you are able to hire lower and lower skill people with high character. You're not stuck where you're the only one who knows everything. And so, Z, I want to ask you because you 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 do this, and I want to ask you this, uh, Steve, as well. When you're out there processing a mortgage, you know, because you, you do mortgages, you help people uh, buy homes. You help them do that. Those checklists you have, how important is it to have those super detailed check? I mean, 
Have you ever signed on a mortgage? Have you ever signed the paperwork and you buy a house? Page after page. How important is like it for you novel. to have these checklists, my oh, friend? Oh, sure. It's crazy important. And, you know, I know you guys have talked about it before, but, you know, I modeled my business early on after uh, the book E-Myth Revisited. And oh, that's what it talks about. Michael Gerber. Is you, yeah, a little Gerber. You go, I don't have a position in my, you know, right now, maybe you're a self-employed person. It's you and one other person and you haven't hired the accountant yet. You know, you wear all these different hats all day long, but you've got to put that job description together, that the explanation of what that position is and what you what you do in that position so that when you do hire the person you can say here here's your job here's the system here's the checklist here here's how we do it because then you can duplicate yourself and you are very successful z's very successful so i'm just going to get into the nitty-gritty the, the kind of the, the stuff behind the stuff so if you're looking at a blank sheet of paper and you're trying i'm going to your optometry clinic and i'm trying to train my team had to do what I do, but I'm looking at a blank sheet of paper. I don't have any checklists. I just do it every day. To me, it's common sense, or I do it all the time. Well, how do you start, Z? How do you start making a checklist? What's the first step? How do you do it? You think you can handle this? I mean, I, I feel fairly I'm emotionally stable right can. now. I, I mean, know. I mean, I, I don't know. Listen to this. You can't handle the truth. Can, can you handle it? I don't want to know anymore. Well, can you handle the truth is what I'm asking. I don't care. Just, <laughs> <laughs> Please cry. Well, you have to break down your checklist into things. You can't just put on there like uh, clean the office. Overall, clean the office. Make it very clean. Yeah, you you, you got to have specifics on there about about all the different little things, the little things that people need to do, and you have to go into it. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I'll I'll make a checklist and I'll go. I wasn't even I, okay. I got to put that down too. You know. Right. Oh, okay. You, yeah. you empty all the right. I didn't uh, say trash, all the trash, trash baskets. You know. Empty you, trash. You're saying like if you were going to tell me how to fill up my gas tank, you can just be like fill up the gas tank. You'd have to say okay, pull the lever. Go over there. No, you have to find the, out which side their tank's exactly. on to begin with. So you've got to walk them through every little step. Every little step. And then that way you can hand it off to someone who's never, you know, filled up a car with gas and they can look, follow those steps and go, oh, okay, I didn't light my foot on fire because I just poured gas on the ground. Hey, I've heard that like big restaurant chains, I won't name any because, uh, but this is how much they dumb down the checklist. They get to work and you know what the number one thing is on there? Turn on the lights. Oh. Okay, that's the thing. It's because well, why are you guys in the dark? <laughs> oh, it wasn't on the checklist. Yeah, and really for it wasn't people, on the checklist. It's not about people are dumb. It's just dumb it down so that you can go and, and we do initials. We don't do check marks by checklist. By the way, real quick for anybody listening right now to to hammer home your point, if you email us right now, info at thrive fifteen dot com, I have Z. I have something secret. You want to know what I have? Oh, I got out of the way. Can I handle it? I have the checklists for a major major restaurant that oh. I've kind of templated where you can go in there and it's super detailed checklist. You can see how the big boys do it. Wow. That's right. We'll email it to you. Wow. You're listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 11. This checklist, I'm just telling you, I've literally, I've worked with dentists, doctors, lawyers, and they see this checklist, they go, oh my gosh, it does say turn the lights on, turn the lights off, pick up, pick up the trash, make sure this works, make sure the place is stocked, make sure it's so detailed. So here's my little notable quotable. I'm, I'm quoting myself here, so I'm pretty excited about this. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Another Clay gets quoted. I'm, I'm quoting it's myself. I'm being, I'm being serious. I, I always tell people, if you want to have a big, if you want to achieve a big dream, you have to focus on the, on the smallest details. And I always tell people, if you want to achieve a big dream, you have to focus on the smallest details. And I mean that because sometimes we're so excited about the big goal that we're just running around going, bro, I was walking on calls this weekend and I have this vision for my business. It's going to be huge. Josh, Josh, we should give me, Josh, Josh, I join me. I want to walk on the calls with you. It's a movement. I love it. It's beyond a job. It's a movement. The Coles taught me something. Bring your handmade knitted hat. Let's join me in the revolution. Ah, yes. That Coles taught me not to walk on him. You know what? That truth nugget, that quote just, just earned you a... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yes. I knew this would happen. I knew this moment would happen right now. I don't hand those out very often, as you know. I don't hand... I'm, I'm pretty stingy with them. But that got you a yeah, baby. You smell terrific. Unbelievable. <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> all right, wow. So, all right. So now we're, we're, we're moving on here. We're talking about, so you've got to that point where you have these systems, you've built these systems, you have great people, you've trained these people. Now we're going to the next stage. Josh, tell us Are about you it. serious? We're going to get there? I'm ready. Stage eight. All right. This is the drop the mic stage, which sounds like so much fun to do. What, what, what is what is the dropping the mic, Clay? Let me explain this to you. I used to DJ in my previous life. I was a DJ for a company called DJConnection.com. Uh, DJ Clay. Well, we have thousands of people listening right now who are like, that's the Joker okay. who was at the Yucatan liquor stand. <laughs> and I mean, I'm, I'm just telling you, I was there on Thirsty Thursdays. I was at Cronies. I've been at Millennium. Some people are going, 
I, I went to a, a, a resort in Miami for a speaking event, and I'm not making this up. I had a guy named Dan was with me, and a guy named Caleb was with me, and the, the, the lady, she, she's serving me the, the lunch, and she says, what do you do? And they go, oh, he's a former DJ, just mess with me. And she goes, where from? They said, Tulsa. She goes, oh, really? And he goes, yeah, he used to DJ at the Yucatan Liquor Stand. It's like they're ribbing me. And she goes, you're the guy. I mean, that was you're the, the guy. Yeah. So, I mean, that was kind of legendary for, for mediocrity there for a long time. So the thing is drop the mic. Those, when you perform at such a high level, you've DJed and you've just been bringing it. Every song is beat matched. Every song fits together. The audience never stops dancing. It is awesome. They can't, they can't stop. Hey, at your 50th birthday party, this is what I'm talking about. You were on fire. The energy was great. I just stopped drop and roll. I mean, it, it was, was unbelievable. It was awesome. And so what happens is when, when people, they, they, they don't know what to do. So they do is they just start to clap spontaneously when, when the wedding's over they just start to clap because they're not sure they've never seen something this awesome and I only did it like once a year when I first started but at the end it would be like almost every show and then what you do is you just drop the mic you just there literally it is. you're done you so, just you destroy a piece of equipment so we have a checklist that we've made for all the things you have <laughs> to do to say that you're quote unquote dropping the mic we're gonna give you a couple of them and then after the break we're gonna unpack a few more but I'm gonna go ahead and give you two right now oh that sounds that's fair you can drop the mic when one your company is dependent on processes and systems and not people Ooh, see mm. what does that mean boom that means that you've got things so dialed in that you can plug somebody else in and you have you have the template there for them to follow and they can follow it and the company you know doesn't skip a beat and so we have, we do wedding photography now. One of the companies I own, one of the companies I own is wedding photography. You also own a company that does men's grooming. Okay. It's elephant in the room. We have 91st in uh, Yale. They got a new one in downtown. We got one in Broken Arrow. And uh, we had one lady who's a really sharp lady and I was so excited for her, but she decided to move on. Her and her husband are moving to a new city mm-hmm. and uh, I hated to see her go, but she said, uh, this new thing came up. He got this job. I'm going to have to put on my two week notice, but I really can only give you about six days. Yeah. And I said, okay, I wasn't, I mean, I was a little frustrated, but I wasn't super mad. And I was able to replace her with somebody who could learn that skill with, with no exaggeration, probably about 15 hours of training. And I was so excited knowing, hey, we haven't dropped the mic yet, but we've got one of these things done. Now, the, the, the second one we're going to talk about after the break is your company will be stable with a competitive and goal achieving leadership team in place. So they have a leadership team. It's not just one person. It's an entire team. They're stable. They're competitive. They're achieving goals. Leadership team. We're going to talk more about it when we come back, Mr. Josh. We're going to be talking about dropping the mic when we come back, and it's going to be awesome. I love dropping the mic. I think it's something that sound men hate, but when you're a business owner, you want to drop that mic. And who better to learn from than Clay Clark, Dr. Z, and Steve Currington? You'll find all about it. Find out all about it when we come back on the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio. 1170. One, two, three. Drop the mic. Ah! Boom. This show's episode is brought to you by Moz.com. If you have ever considered the World Wide Web as a viable strategy for your business, you got to check out this tool. Online marketing is complicated, but Moz Software makes it easy. Companies like 99designs, Otterbox, and Aaron's, they all use Moz because it works. Explore organic search keywords for your business, research Bing and Google search results for your targeted keywords, and link up Moz Local and Google My Business. Seriously, this tool is crazy powerful with the clarity it brings to online marketing for your business. Even if you're just curious, start a 30-day trial with Moz.com today. It's a game changer for your business. Moz.com, M-O-Z.com. Welcome back to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. Josh Merrill here with Clay Clark, Dr. Z, and our special guest, Steve Currington.com. Uh, we're talking about the eight business stages to turn your business dreams into reality. We're on stage eight, which is the drop the mic stage, Clay. Oh, well, this, the money stage. Well, this means that you can now step away from the business on a day-to-day basis. You're still checking in from time to time, and you're still holding your team accountable to their daily key performance indicators. But how do you know when you can step away from the daily operations? How do you know? Well, the next the next sign is if your company is stable with a competitive and goal-achieving leadership team in place. I said competitive. And I said, goal achieving leadership team in place. So Z, I want to ask you, your optometry clinic, I'm not sure how many years it's been uh, open at this point. Has it been open for uh, 20 years? 
We're celebrating our 25th year this fall. 25? Wow. Woo. 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 That's Tulsa crazy. Is cheering. If you're you're going to go in there right now. Do you have some kind of special right now? Do people go in there and celebrate the specialness of this moment? Absolutely. We always have our $99 deal, which is pretty awesome. But I'll tell you what, right now we're in back to school and we you, we have a free frame warranty, which is a big deal. If you were like me growing up, I always had a piece of tape on my glasses because yeah. we didn't have a whole lot, a lot of kids, not a lot of money. And so I would get these glasses in court. We'd tape them together and I would go around. <laughs> I was that guy, you know, with yeah, tape all right. over my on the corners, usually sometimes in the middle. And uh, and if I had only gone to myself as a kid, if I only could have done that. If I could only I, go to myself. If I could just like a back and like a, I don't know. Time travel. Time travel. Which you're working on. I'm, I'm well. Cloning and time aren't traveling. We all, yeah. Aren't we all really working on that? With only trips through space and time, Ooh. we could achieve oh. this. Ooh. So uh, th- those, are, those are things I think really, you know. I mean, I look at when I was a kid and I go, you know, hey. We want to make sure these kids aren't having to go around with tape on their glasses. So free frame warranty, any pair of glasses you buy. It's awesome. Break them, I'll replace them. Well, thank you for doing that, my friend. I want to to ask you this here. Your optometry clinic has a very stable and competitive uh, team. They're, you know, they're, they're, they have a great, they're goal achieving. How do you get your team to a point where they're stable and competitive? It seems like those are kind of two, you know, competing ideas. Stable, very stable, very stable, very stable, very, very competitive, competitive. Are you, you know, Salesman of the week, salesman of the month. That's my that's my parking spot. Don't take it. Pretty stable. <laughs> how do you how do you get to that stable and competitive? Well, the two I think the two go hand in hand, and and you get that by if you missed our earlier segment, you want to make sure and pick it up on the Thrive Time Show. Oh yeah. But we talked about hiring great people and the seven C's into getting those great people. So that's part of the, that culture of competitiveness comes from the leadership, and so we have a we have a culture of competitiveness. We celebrate victories. We celebrate having record months. We celebrate having record days. We celebrate that. But then also we're very stable because we also know that hey, we all have our parts to play. We all have our jobs to do. Everybody has a very clear assigned role in what they're doing. So the idea that hey, we're all in the same boat but we want to outrow the other boats. Um, I don't, I don't encourage a lot of competitiveness amongst themselves so much as us against the other, the other uh, guys out there in the, which one of you guys can bench press more weight? I swear if whoever can bench more weight, I'm going to promote you. Who can deflate the ball? Who can deflate? Is that a Tom Brady joke? Always ripping on my main man, Tom Brady. He only deflated the ball because he wanted to win. <laughs> oh, in that case, it's and, okay. And he won. <laughs> That's right. I say that. I'm sorry. Sorry, no, Tom. Was that stable or competitive? <laughs> that was that was competitive. In Tom, that Brady. Case. Tom, Tom Brady. Tom <laughs> Brady. Anyway, so here's the deal. Now, the third thing is that, uh, uh, Steve, this is a question I want to ask you. Steve Currington, stevecurrington.com, one of Tulsa's leading mortgage experts. Unbelievable. Now, Steve, I want to ask you this question. You have, if it's, if it's drop the mic stage, you, you know you've done it when you've installed these powerful guardrails and controls that keep your team accountable on a daily basis of taking the action steps required to produce those predictable successes. I want to ask you, in the mortgage business, when you're writing a mortgage, what kind of guardrails does the government or do the various institutions and and governing bodies, what kind of guardrails have they put in place to keep you from, you know, committing acts of, of, of you know, for, from screwing up people's mortgages. I mean, what kind of guardrails do they have in place for that, my friend? Oh, they're creating them daily. <laughs> so, I mean, there's just a lot of them. I mean, obviously we're dealing with people's lives and the the finances and stuff, but listen, it's all systematized. It, it's everything systematized. There's a checklist for everything. You know, even as far as the automated underwriting systems, we use uh, Fannie Mae, for example, it spits out findings that the underwriter follows step by step so that you don't have people making um, as you said earlier, your, your, your system's dependent, not people dependent, because you don't want somebody who, you know, they leave and no one knows how to underwrite a loan, right? So, yeah. And you know, the thing is, is your business has grown. It continues to grow all the time. I know those guardrails matter to keep you as the owner protected. Cause if someone on your team screws up, they come after you. Oh, sure. Yeah, and exactly. With, and with you, it's hard to, for the people to visualize. This is the kind of stuff you can see only at Thrive15.com. Ooh. But you, your, your name is Steve Currington, but you have stevecurrington.com as, as, as tattoos. Is this correct? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> and so this is a thing where I'm just, this is a, the visuals you're not going to see if you're not. I know it's we're listening to an audio radio program here, but I want you to know, Thrivers, if you're listening, we have checklists for you, actual v- physical templates that you can download and have access to if you're a member of the Thrive15.com business coaching platform. You just go there. We're going to give that to you, okay? And you can see beautiful pictures of Steve Currington. And we're going to number, we're going to this next part here of this is all stage eight, okay? As clients start to come to your business for the products and services they want and not 
not just to you specifically as the owner. And you went through this. I mean, this this was what happened to you at DJ Connection. This was the soul sucking part. This was the hardest <laughs> part. No, this is honestly this is one of the reasons why it's I sold true. it. This is one of the reasons I had to sell it. Yeah, because people would call and go boop 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 boop. I go DJ Connection. This is Clay, and they'd go, Hey, could you do our daughter's wedding? And I said, This truly happened a lot. Yeah, and I'd say June sixth. I'm booked out. They go June thirteenth. And I said, Well, what day are they have they chosen? They go, We'll move it. And I go, you're going to move the day of your wedding? Yeah, sure. Wow. And so I am not exaggerating. I had at one point, I want to say like 85 weekends in a row booked out like deep. So wow. I couldn't go to things. I was missing weddings, missing events, that kind of thing. And I had to get to a point where people would ask for my team and not for me. So when we come back, we're going to be talking very in depth about that. Z, why would we want to stick around? I, I've got a great story about that. That's going to tickle your funny bone and maybe make you, Ooh, there we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yummy. That just, that just took over. Oh yeah. I'm moving now. <laughs> I can't wait to hear it, Z. I can't, I can't wait to hear it. I can't wait either. Hey, you're listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. We're going to continue this conversation on Stage 8, dropping the mic in your business. You're not going to want to miss it. Stick around. One, two, three. Drop the mic. Boom. Right now, how are you taking credit card payments for your business? It's never been faster or easier to begin taking credit card payments for your business than with Square. You know the little white square that plugs into your phone's headphone jack? It's awesome. This payment app is great for businesses such as food trucks, beauty salons, and retail shops. The users receive a small portable card reader that they can attach to a phone or other mobile device to take fast and convenient payments. The way it works is that it subtracts 2.75% of every time a card is run uh, and it does it automatically. So if you sell a sandwich for $20, you'll see a net gain of $19.45 in your bank account the next day. If you enter the card by hand, it costs 3.5% plus 15 cents on top of that. They encrypt everything so you know you're secure. They make it super clear to start and even offer bonuses for sharing with friends. So you can learn more at squareup.com. It's free to download and works on all devices and operating systems. So make sure that you go visit squareup.com. Welcome back to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. Josh Merrill here with Clay Clark, Dr. Z, and our special guest, Steve Currington. Uh, we're talking about stage eight here of the eight business stages to turn your business dreams into reality. It's stage eight, drop the mic. And you know that you're at this stage, all right? Once clients start to come to your business for the products and services they want and not to you specifically as the owner. Dr. Z, you got a great story about this. <laughs> yeah, I got a funny story. So I always taught my doctors when they walked in the room to introduce themselves. And uh, if it's a man, reach out and shake their hand. If it's a woman, you know, you never reach your hand to a woman. That's a little bit of uh, etiquette for everybody out there. Ooh, you always new. wait for a woman to reach your hand wow. towards you. Oh. Man, so don't, that's good knowledge. You don't reach your hand towards a woman. So so anyway, they are, they're always telling their names. And so every now and then, a doctor will have a you know connection with the patient. So when they come back a year later, later, they'll want to see that that doctor again. They'll request their specific doctor. So one day they have a they had a, a note up on the thing. It said uh, Doctor Z only, Doctor Z only. Mm. So I pull the chart and I'm kind of flipping through it before I'm walking through the door. And I noticed that Doctor Boatwright had actually seen this patient the last few times. Right. The boat. So I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking, but yeah, boat, my main man, boat. So I'm thinking, that's kind of weird that they'd request me when, you know, and so I walk in the door and the patient looks up and says, oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but I'm here to see Dr. Zellner. And so I said, oh, well, yes, you are. I'm sorry. I didn't see that on the chart. I'll go get him right now. So I walk out of the room, put the chart back, go get boat, boat, you're up. <laughs> he walks in the <laughs> room. And, amazing. Yeah. They saw Dr. Dr. Zellner. Oh, wow. So. That's beautiful. That so you found you found a way to replace yourself there. <laughs> yeah, just there, everybody tell her. Just hey, everybody I'm said they're Dr. Z. Uh, can I find him? You, you went and took a break. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm like, Amazing. hey, Love that's it. how you clone yourself now. There now, you here's go. what we want to talk about. Once you have got the business to the point where you can quote unquote drop the mic, when you do drop the mic, when you're when you're sort of saying, I I'm done, cherry on top. There's really six exit strategies Ooh. that um, you can do at this point because you, you've built your business where it's dependent upon these systems, it's not dependent upon you. It just works. Things are, it's like a well-oiled machine. So option number one is you can open up multiple locations. And Z, you've chosen to do that. 
people at listening right now will say, well, see, how come you didn't open up your third location or your fourth location in Tulsa? Why did you not open up a third or fourth? Well, uh, in Oklahoma, if you go beyond two locations and you have to start treating them differently. So there were some uh, laws that limited what I could do. And so I went to two. That's why I've kind of done the other businesses to kind of grow. So I, I've started getting into other businesses. And that's how I've kind of grown my empire other than just opening up more optical stores. Get ready. It's rapid fire. Here we go. Passive too. Passive means the business you make money, but you're not working there every day. You're maybe working one hour a week or less in the businesses. Yep. Z, do you do that with any of your companies? Are you there? Y- yes. Okay, so yes. pa- so passive. Now, the next one is it's sellable. Number three, it's sellable. Someone, someone says, hey, listen, I love your processes so much. I love the profit it makes so much. I'm willing to buy it. I'm willing to buy the business. Even if you and some of your people leave, I still want to buy the processes, the systems, the swag, the blue sky. And Z, have you ever, have you ever sold a business? Yes, I have. And do people, I mean, do people get emotional that you're not going to be there anymore? Well... You have to ask them to some degree, but I mean, it was the right move. I mean, sometimes you get make an offer that you maybe an offer I could not refuse. So, you know, it's sellable. The next is franchisable. That means other people say, I love your system so well. I want to franchise it. I want to take it all over the world. One of our, our clients and a dear friend of mine, Jonathan Barnett, he went to Victory Christian. I've Ooh. known him from his dorm room days to now where he has hundreds of locations, OXI, oxyfresh.com. And he's one of our thrive15.com mentors. And so he's a neat, neat guy. The next one, number five, is licensing. Companies like, uh, people don't think of them this way, but companies like Eddie Bauer, companies like the Yankees. People yeah. say, hey, I want to pay you for the rights to use your Yankee logos on my apparel. I want to pay you for the rights to use Eddie Bauer, that name on my uh, on my vehicle, on my vehicle line. I had the- an expedition that was Eddie Bauer. Eddie Bauer edition. Yeah. Beautiful. Ooh. And the sixth is when venture capital starts to chase you. When people are saying, we love what you're doing so well, we want to put money into your business. And the best example I can tell you is the ladies who started SoulCycle, Elizabeth Cutler and Julie Rice. They built this little business called SoulCycle and venture capital started chasing them and filled them with capital and allowed them to retain the majority ownership, but allowed them to scale it and grow it all over the planet. You're listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1110. Wow, that was extremely fast. Now, I've heard, I don't know if this is true, but I've heard there's a place on the internet that we can go and actually learn that stuff at maybe a slower pace. Is that true? I don't know anything about it. Z, do you know anything about this I, place? I have the answer. Oh, I love I it. Know, I know the golden goose. You can squeeze it anytime you want and get a little egg out of it anytime you want. Ooh. It's called Thrive15.com. And for a measly, I mean measly $19 a month, measly. Measly. You spend more on that than you do Starbucks coffee in a month, right? Absolutely. So for $19, you can have the world's best business code coaches at your fingertips 24 seven. You've got a question. It's on thrive15.com. The answer that is you, if it's not, or you, you have some out of the box question, you just type it in info, send it. And guess what? It gets answered. I've heard, I've heard people even say this. I've ever, I can hear somebody right now saying, what if I want to have an in-person workshop? What if I want to, you know, we have, we have those. You can sign up and attend those uh, in-person workshops are included in your, in your deal. Uh, now, Clark, Clay, yeah. When you business coach the business, how much would you, on average, don't get too specific, would charge somebody? Um, usually on a minimum of like fifteen hundred, and then a maximum of usually like on I guess an average of maybe five thousand a people, month. You charge people, me I, way more than that, Clay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd say an average of five thousand. So month. somebody can get all that knowledge, and not only from you, but from other great mentors around this country for nineteen dollars a month. If you're thinking about starting a business, if you have a business, I'm telling you what, folks, this type of business coaching is. Well, it's worth a lot of money and we're only charging $19 and you can binge watch like Netflix or you can just watch a little segment. They're chopped up in 15 minute bite sized little increments. So for I would tell someone out there for 15 minutes a day, we can change your life. And for $19 a month, you can change your life. So thrive 15.com. That's where you find it. Thrive 15.com. It's awesome. Uh, we got another awesome thing here. It's Steve Currington with TLC. Now you've got uh, a great giveaway, correct? Yes. So we do have a giveaway. So obviously mortgage business, we do home loans and we get a lot of people out there that are on the fence. They say, well, I just don't know if I qualify. Maybe I'm a first time buyer. I don't understand the rules. So go to stevecurrington.com or you can go to get qualified. That's G E T K O L A I F I D (laughs) qualified. Sorry, man. No no matter how you spell it, man. Isn't that a marsupial? Just go to stevecurrington.com. That's the place and apply for a mortgage, mm. and we've partnered with our friends over at Chick-fil-A to provide a chicken sandwich of your choice uh, for anybody that wants to apply. And I think we've got 
almost an unlimited number of them, a hundred of them. What, what, so, what are rates right now? Just out of curiosity. Oh, we can't quote rates, you know, in the range. Oh, come on, so, Mr. Political. Okay. So, Unbelievable. Oh, come on. Okay, I can tell you this. I just locked a FHA loan on a 30 year fixed at 3.125. That's like free money. Unbelievable. Crazy. That's yeah. like free money. Yeah. So rates are ridiculously low. So that, you know, you watch the market, they creep up a little bit, but they're still low. They're still. Really My better. father bought his first house in 1970 some odd. Oh no. And the interest rates were, they, they had to, 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 to kill down inflation. You know, inflation was going crazy to kill it. They raised interest rates. I want to say to 18. I was looking at the historical, oh, yeah. like yeah. 18%. So this, it really is free money. But I would tell you sincerely, if you're listening right now, this is your day. This is your time to change your life. You can do this. Okay, you can go to thrive. You can go to the thrivetimeshow.com or thrive15.com. You can replay this. You can listen to it again. But we are here to help you. If you want to come to an in-person workshop, just come come find us. We want to help you change your life. This isn't about how to make more money. It's how to make more time freedom. How to make more financial freedom, so you can be the husband, the wife, the spouse, the dad you want to be. You, if you have enough money, you can spend your time focusing on what really matters and not just money all the time. So, Z, I'm going to let you take us out of here. Well, I I want to say one thing. I mean, having a it's you know, having a happy home is wonderful, but having a happy, successful business really completes a man. And so for all the people out there in America that are listening to this right now, we know there's a big percent of you that want to have your own business. And guess what? We're here to help coach you. We're here to help mentor you. We're, help, we're here to help you so you don't have to make the mistakes that we had to make when we started out. Boom. That's how we do it here on the Thrive Time Show. I'd like to thank uh, Clay Clark, Dr. Z, Steve Currington, our man Nate in the sound booth over there. Hey, it's the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. We'll see you next time. We're out. Three, two, one. Boom. Drop the mic.